I'm filming this video because I kind of like seeing other people's toolboxes and toolkits, camera kits and stuff like that. I just really like kits in general. And I've decided to show you my toolkit. That's the toolkit that I use here in the shop all the time. Uh, I also take this out uh, if I'm doing some repairs at home or I'm fixing my car. I have a whole separate kit of tools uh, that I use for work and I have some really nice tools here. Uh, so the toolbox is just a replica of Adam Savage toolbox. I have a video on how to build a one like this or how to make a scissor lift stand for it. I'm gonna link those videos in comments if you're interested. So let's crack it open. Opens up like this with two latches and voila! It is very nicely organized, so I don't have to go through a pile of stuff to get to something that I'm looking for. It just takes time to organize a box like this, but then it saves you time all the time. So I have this big compartment in the middle. On the right hand side, I have this kind of uh, shelf uh, with the lid uh, where I keep the smaller stuff so it's not flying all over the box. On the left, I have the sewn compartment where I keep the most frequently used tools. And I'm just going to show you what I have in here. So here we have the compartment with pliers. Uh, here we have the Nipex side cutters. The side cutters is where you spend the money and the actual pliers is where you can chip out a little bit because they're not so important as the side cutters. Then I have the small size needle nose pliers. Uh, these are very small but very long and handy. Uh, very useful stuff for reaching into smaller places. And then we have the similar size nippers uh, for snipping stuff in uh, tighter places. Uh, then I have my Stanley, this kind of pliers. Uh, it has this button in the middle and you can open or close them up. Uh, these are very good for dealing with uh, nuts and bolts and stuff like this. And then I have another needle nose pliers uh, that has a curve like this. Also useful stuff, I use them as my MIG pliers as well. Then we have the wire strippers. Uh, these are made by Haupa. Uh, it's very similar to Nipex, uh, also a German brand, uh, very good stuff. Then I have my Casio calculator. Uh, this is definitely an overkill for the workshop use. I just kept it from my college days. So next up, we have the Nipex Cobras, the big size. These are mostly good for plumbing, but I use them for all sorts of applications, uh, dealing with bolts. You have a lot of leverage with a big size like this. Very good stuff. Then I have the big Stanley Posit Drive 2 screwdriver. This is the most common size for the screws around the shop. Then we have two chisels, 10 mil and 20 mil. Uh, these are not really for woodworking. I mean, they are, but I do stuff with these that you're not supposed to do with a chisel. Uh, they're quite beat up, but I found them very useful around the shop. Then I have just a regular small wrench like this. Nothing special about it, you all know what's up with it. So then I have the small Philips uh, number one screwdriver. Uh, this is made by Vera. This size is very useful for dealing with electronics and stuff like that. Then I have a screwdriver like this. Uh, this one is actually very cool. It's a vintage Porsche screwdriver. It's a flat head on one side and you can pull it out and put it like this and you have Philips number two screwdriver. I've had it for many, many years and it didn't strip out or anything. Uh, I really like this one. Then I have a set of uh, four different shape uh, files. These are very useful when you're building up a electronic box or something like this. I use those all the time. And next up, we have the 3M safety glasses. Uh, I just like the fit of those. I lose those constantly. I have to buy a new pair every like couple of months. They're cheap, light and fit on my head really good. Then I have just the regular uh, what you call this, a tweezer, I guess, uh, for grabbing on some smaller stuff. Then I have a couple of plastic boxes with some stuff. Uh, here I have a box with some nails, uh, some bolts, some screws, some pop rivets. Um, then we have a box with some electronic stuff, electrical tape, some glue, uh, some earplugs, uh, some extra exacto blades. And then I have a set of uh, tiny Screwdrivers. These are also very useful for electronics. Uh, this is like some $10 stuff, but it lasted me a very, very long time. Very good. Then I have a pair of just the regular scissors. Then we have two sets of Allen keys, uh, just the regular Allen keys and a Torx head Allen keys. Not much to say about them. You just gotta have those. Then I have this really, really cool tool. Uh, it's a dial calipers. I took this tip from Adam Savage and I'm really glad I bought a pair of these. 
Then I have my old trusty multimeter. Uh, this one is made by Unit. It has the light, it has the sound uh, bridging thing. Uh, you can check the voltage, obviously. Good stuff, very useful. Then I have the smaller size, uh, one of these. I don't know the English name for it. Very useful for like putting like patty or body filler, uh, cleaning stuff, uh, good thing to have. Small size Stanley bubble level, Stanley Hudson. Then I have the Makita bit set uh, with a screwdriver. Uh, nothing special about this one. And a little Stanley hacksaw for quick little cuts. Oh, this one I really, really like. This is probably one of the best looking and feeling hammers I've seen. Uh, this one is made by Fiskars. Uh, you can buy it in different sizes. Uh, this size works for me. I think this is uh, medium or small. Yeah, I think it's medium. Uh, very nice hammer. The good old uh, kind of big size vice grips. These are all rusty because they came from the fire and they still kind of work, so I keep them. Uh, then we have the Stanley pop riveter. Don't buy cheap pop riveters. They are hell to work with. Get yourself a good like Stanley or something. Uh, they're not that expensive. And you're just gonna enjoy your work so much more uh, with a good pop riveter. And last two things in a middle compartment uh, is the big wood rasp and big file. So then we have this compartment here on the right uh, with my most frequently used stuff. So first of all is a tape measure. This one is a very old school retro Stanley uh, tape measure. Uh, this one is small size. Uh, it's very good for the workshop. It's not very good for the construction work because you cannot uh, extend it out uh, very, very far. It's like over one meter and it's gonna break. Uh, so very good for the workshop, uh, not very good for the construction work. And then we have my Japanese uh, collapsible woodworker so uh, this one is very nice size uh, it collapses nicely uh, to put it together you have to give it a good old bang and it's built up uh, that's how it looks uh, very awesome so and not super expensive uh, this one was about uh, 20 25 euros very good deal. Uh, then we have the standard X-Acto blade, just a regular Sharpie, uh, regular pencil, and the Sharpie with a long tip. Uh, this one is very good for marking inside of long things and marking around the thing, uh, good stuff. Then I have my favorite uh, Stanley Fat Max, uh, just a knife. As a construction worker, I've had hundreds and hundreds of knives, and this one is probably the best knife I've ever had. Uh, it's super nice design, very strong and sturdy. Uh, it's really hard to break it. Super easy to replace the blade, uh, takes a second. It sits awesome in a hand, and with this knife, you just feel the precision when you cut stuff. Uh, then I have this uh, little tiny crowbar, uh, and you will be surprised how useful this thing is. If you're like me, you put stuff uh, together a lot with the nail gun. And if you're like me, you screw up a lot. And this thing is super useful to take apart the thing that you made, uh, even if you used glue. You have surprisingly a lot of leverage with this thing. You can pull out nails. It is super tough, you can't bend it. It's made by a brand named Haltafers. I suggest you get one of these in your tool kits. Uh, super small size, but very useful. Then just a regular spring-loaded center punch. Uh, then we have a regular punch and a nice uh, metal scraper. And here on the side, I have my kit of uh, hole saws, just the regular hole saws. Uh, then we have this uh, compartment with a lid. I keep some smaller stuff here so it doesn't fly all over the box. Here I have my propane soldering iron. It is very useful, sometimes even more useful than the power bank uh, soldering iron uh, because this one doesn't have any wires and it's like for tight spaces this is uh, the must. The only problem with this is that it has a little hole on the side, you can probably see it, and it's for the gas to escape. 
and it gets like super hot around this area and you can actually burn something. I have damaged the cables with this before and it's not fun to deal with, so keep an eye on this if you get one of those. Then I have the standard uh, two inch C-clamps, uh, just a collection of tapes. Uh, the plumbing tape, which is not actually really good for plumbing, but it's very good for air tools. Uh, electrical tape, uh, medical tape, uh, some double side sticky tape, and a regular masking tape. Next up is just the standard, uh, I think you call this a compass, uh, to draw circles. And it's actually very useful for measuring stuff as well. Just a regular aluminum ruler uh, for measuring stuff or drawing straight lines. Next up is actually a very interesting tool. It looks like this. It has the tiny, has the tiny thing on the end. Uh, it's actually for removing hooks from fish, uh, but I use it for reaching into tight spaces and like grabbing cables or something like this. Uh, I actually took this tip from uh, Jamie Heineman. I don't use this a lot, but when I use it, I am so happy that I have this in my kit. And it's kind of fun uh, looking too. You can pinch somebody. Some extra blades for knives, small and big size. Uh, I buy the expensive blades because the cheaper ones are like super bendy and they break easily when you don't need them to. And the more expensive blades like uh, Stanley, no problem with these at all. Then we have a standard white correction pen. Uh, it's very good for drawing on black surfaces. Just a small Stanley blade. Uh, Electrician screwdriver. This one is very good for checking the wall sockets to see if there is any electricity passing through. Uh, it can save your life, this thing. Just a good old tilt brush to clean things. And the last one is this tool for measuring the angle. It's an awesome tool to measure an outside angle. Uh, however, you cannot measure the inside angle with it. So it's kind of, so it's kind of sucks and kind of awesome at the same time. And yeah, that's pretty much it for my toolbox review. You know, when I've just started, I've had a lot of those super, super cheap uh, Chinese tools and they have served me kind of a ride for the good amount of time. And every time something was breaking, I was just replacing it with some better stuff. And eventually I got a kit that I'm really happy with. I don't like having extra stuff in my toolbox and the stuff that I don't use at all, I just put it in some other place uh, for the time when I'm gonna need it. And yeah, this kit just works really good for me for what I do now. And maybe in a couple of years, we're gonna have a totally different toolbox review. I hope you got something useful out of this video. Maybe you spotted some tools that you want to add in your kit. Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to get some cool stickers to put on your toolbox. That's it from me and I'll see you in the next one.